14 right now, and it means uh, time for a little lights camera. McCarthy. Yes. Hi, Good morning Patricia. to all three of you. Good morning. This is incredible to be here with all three of you this morning. All right, so there's a new uh, show on Apple TV Plus this Friday called Sugar. Uh, I, I love this type of series. It's about a private detective. Colin Farrell is starring in the series, and basically it's kind of like an old-school private detective film noir type of story. His character is hired by a legendary film producer to track down his missing grandchild, and essentially Colin Farrell's character, as you can see here, he's kind of a good guy slash bad guy. He, he's a private detective, but he does bad things. So there's like moral, that moral ambiguity mm. between the character, which I always think is interesting. He even says in the show, you know, the idea of being good and bad is in the eye of the beholder. Um, so when I spoke to Colin Farrell, he popped up on my screen and I didn't realize we were just going to get into a chat, like a casual conversation about movies that we love, which I love because this happened last week with Ewan McGregor, where the interview just started and we were just chatting before it became an actual interview. Um, so I love the beginning of this piece and and then we're going to talk more with Colin Farrell about the vulnerability that he finds in characters when they have dogs or animals involved. You remember there was a movie he made a couple years ago called The Banshees of Inishirin, where he had a donkey named Jenny that was a very emotional part of that movie. So we talked about the vulnerability that animals bring to characters. Take a look. I wanted to ask you, I love the scene with James Cromwell. When you, you, you go up to him, and I think you say, like, I've seen these movies five or six times, but yeah. then there's one that I've seen over and over and over again. If you were to think about the movie you've seen the most in your life, what do you think that movie is? Well, holy <laughs> I'm doing this 25 years, nobody's ever asked me that. <laughs> um, the one I've seen most is probably Back to the Future. Which one? The first one. Really? Okay, yeah. so now this is my friends and I get into a lot of debates on this. I love three, but one is obviously the. Classic. I love three. Three is tons of fun. Two, three is, I love them all. Three is tons of fun. I just won. Yeah, go back to the original time and time again. And my kids have been raised on the original. I went through a few. I went through a lot of Spielberg stuff. Jaws, E.T., Close Encounters, With Nail and I, Paris, Texas. <laughs> Ones I've seen countless, countless times. Um, but yeah. Jeez, we just watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood last night again at home, and that's only a few years old, and I might have seen that four times, but Back to the Future. Can I offer a hot take? I think that might be Tarantino's best movie. Yeah, you do? I really do. That's I mean, wonderful. It's, rock, rock. it's Richard Wong cinematography. I tell you oh. one thing, I, 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 I would say I think it's his most enjoyable. I just, I, I don't know that it'll ever be on and I'll be able to switch off it, you know? Right, it's so easy to watch. And yeah, Richardson's it really is. It's so pleasing. It's so funny. It's sneakily moving as well. And yeah. um, and you're just left with this, God, if only at the end, you know, if only know. things had been different. Another beautiful day in California. Out here. I'm one of the good guys. That can be in the eye of the beholder. All the leaves are brown. John Sugar. And the sky is gray. I'm a private investigator. They told me that you do one thing and one thing only. You find the missing. His granddaughter. She's missing. I always find this interesting. When I watch characters, there's nothing that makes a character, in my opinion, more vulnerable than an animal that's tied to that character in yeah. some way. And obviously with the dog here, but dude, I still think about Jenny from Banshees all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I miss that character. And I, I just wondered what, as an actor, when you associate with an animal in a film, the vulnerability that that brings to the character. I mean, I'd love to hear your pers perspective on... Jenny from Banshees as well, like just kind of like what those characters, Jenny. what those do for you as an actor. Ah, they do you a favor, as you said, they make you look good, you know, but but the vulnerability is kind of, is also a, a production thing because you never know what an animal's going to do and, <laughs> and sometimes they don't do what the script has, um, the script desires them to do. They won't stand where they're supposed to stand or bark and all that kind of stuff. And obviously there's a lot of animals that are very well trained, but the beautiful thing is when an animal comes onto the set in my experience the animal's the boss and it's very it's it's unspoken nobody says the animal's the boss but everything changes and there's a nervousness and there's a tentativeness and that kind of bleeds into actually even the point after action is called because you 
animals are more honest than human beings. They don't have the abstraction that we sometimes get lost in and, and become dishonest as a result of, of living within or around or under um, certain desires, certain ambitions, certain fears of mortality and all that stuff. Animals don't really contend with that. So they don't get lost in the fray. They don't get lost in the complications and the obfuscations of all these human considerations. So they're very honest. So you just, they're the boss and you're there with them. And it, they're like, it's like working with the most honest, most exciting actor in the world, even because they're not, act, they're truly not acting at all. And I love, people say you should never work with animals or children. I love working with, with both. But you gotta miss them when you cut, when the movie's over. Ah, yeah, God, I loved Jenny. Oh. Ah, she was divine. <laughs> And, and Wiley was, in this show, we got to work with the most magnificent dog. Yeah. Not any more magnificent than you, Tom. We have Tom's, next, Tom's dog? next door. <laughs> My publicist Danica's dog, Tom, is next door listening to this. <laughs> All right, Sugar is the new series on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, I want to tease ahead to DMV Zone later on. There was a question I asked Colin Farrell there, which was, the, what's the movie you've seen the most in your life? Uh, and his was Back to the Future. Mine's probably Terminator 2 or Face Off. Uh, so hashtag DMV Zone, hashtag Good Day DC. Yeah. What's the movie you think you've seen the most in your life? Wow. Do you guys have one? I know we have to go real quick. Nemo. Nemo, uh, all right. Probably Wizard of Oz, nice. something like that. I love the movie Bridesmaids. You've seen that the oh, most, I you think? I love that movie. Yeah. I the airplane that scene. Let us know. Hashtag Good Day DC. That was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mikhail, what about you? Huh. Hashtag Good Day DC. Hashtag DMV Zone. <laughs>